Member for Light. Thank you, Mr. Acting Speaker. Mr. Acting Speaker, I rise to uh, speak against this motion, and I'll explain why. It's not, it's not that I don't acknowledge. I will acknowledge first up the importance of the regions to the state's economy, not only the economy but, the, but to society generally. And I do acknowledge that. But the part which, which um, the reason I'm speaking against this motion is, uh, is the, because the motion implies that the Marshall Liberal government was the first one to actually find the regions and actually notice our regions there and did something for the regions. Well, that's just not, not true. Uh, and the regions were, have, were supported by the previous Labor government in a whole range of ways. In fact, a number of the projects which the Liberal Party did the ribbon cutting were actually previously funded by the Labor government. And I'll go into those, some of those details. Now, it was interesting to hear the member from MacKillop uh, speak, and uh, he went and his uh, defence of the Liberal government, Marshall Liberal government. It was interesting, he spent most of the last four years in the previous government actually distancing himself from the party as much as he could. Every opportunity, either in the media or in this chamber, uh, either in the media, in the chamber, distancing himself. Uh, actually, my margin went up, so just you know, did it really? By 11 per cent? No. Right. Thank you. Uh, Member for Lee didn't know his numbers. Sorry? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I, I don't worry, I know my numbers. <laughs> uh, so, the member for McKillop uh, had a whole range of reasons. In fact, he actually crossed the floor on a number of occasions to, to vote on the, on the, against the. Uh, Mr. Speaker, if the member, f if the member for Chafee wants to make a contribution, he can later. Perhaps he can grant me the courtesy. Order, order, order. Right. Let's get back to your contribution, member for life. Thank you, Mr. Acting Speaker. Uh, so, the, as I said, the member for MacKillop spent most of his last term actually distancing himself from the Liberal Party as much as he could. In fact, in fact, there was actually speculation he actually would run as an independent. That's how far his his commentary, his commentary. He's, he's a regional member. It's quite relevant. It's, he's a regional member. It's quite relevant what he says and does. So, uh, Mr. S Mr. Acting Speaker, so. Oh, yeah, I am a real embarrassment. I've held my. Mem <laughs> member for Chafee, you're warned for the second time. I want to hear your contribution, so please yeah. don't make me throw you out. I've actually held my seats for five elections, mate, you know. So, uh, which was actually, which actually was a Liberal seat, you might want to remember. So, uh, so he spent the whole. Oh, well, I have to. I have to repeat myself, Mr. Mr. Acting Speaker, because I was interrupted. So, go your hardest, mate. Go your hardest, uh, Mr. 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 Acting Speaker. So it's interesting to hear his contribution today, how he defended the Marshall Liberal government when he spent most of the time when they were in government, actually distancing himself from the government of the day. So putting that aside, he's not alone there. There's quite there's a few other Liberal Party members and some ex-members who did the same thing, and I can understand why. I can understand why, because deep in his heart, the member from McKillop knows that Liberal Party, the Liberal government, didn't actually look after the regions at all. And in fact, he had a, I can remember very clearly a passionate speech, a very passionate speech in this chamber about the, how the Marshall Liberal government responded to the COVID and pa pandemic and how it was impacting on his electorate and the South East. And I wouldn't say it was actually a supportive uh, passionate speech. It was quite critical of the Marshall Liberal government and particularly for those border communities, how their inability to acknowledge the importance of the regions and how they interact with other states, that their response to that was appalling. And he actually said so in this chamber and how it was impacting on regional people. So, but I'm glad to see the member from McKillop's being re-educated, reformed, and actually now sees things for a different light. But let's go look at some of the things. This goes, this goes through, Mr. Speaker, some of the things they mentioned. The, year, the, the education thing, the Year 7's contribution, well, that's true. They actually did move Year 7's to, to high schools. And what happened, a lot of schools, though, and schools in my, in my electorate were the same, they actually had to redirect funding, which had been paid prior by the previous Labor government, to actually accommodate the additional Year 7's and not input into other valuable projects for the actual high school students. So, and that's just the reality. Most schools, most schools had to reallocate funding to, to, accommodate, to accommodate the new Year 7 groups in high school, which means they went... And they went... So the whole range right of other facilities could not be built. And you just talk to the governing councils in some of those regional areas and in my electorate and say how they were actually annoyed that the $10 million provided by the previous Labor government had to actually then go to fund 
a liberal idea rather than actually upgrade the existing facilities to ensure that secondary students got the quality education they could get in conjunction with the good teachers they have. Then we have we come to the Barossa Hospital. Oh, that's a wonderful uh, item. So again, as a member for Lee spoke, um, you know, we didn't build a new Barossa Hospital. That's correct. Nor, nor did we mislead the Barossa people on a number of occasions that we would. We made very clear what the, the previous Labor government had made very clear what the preconditions to build a new Barossa Hospital were. Some in the community didn't like that. We were open up and open about that. What the Liberal Party, the Liberal government did for the last four years was give the impression they were doing something when they actually did nothing else. They had a report. Then the first report said they needed a second report. That second report is actually not even finished yet. Okay, not even finished yet. And all they did commit funding-wise was a few million dollars to buy some land at the end of the Ford Estimates. End of the Ford Estimates. So, and it's interesting because one of the landowners who's been approached has uh, recently approached me and told me that his land was considered by the, by the government and now it's not been considered anymore. So, oh, that's right. You just keep saying that. You just keep telling Member people for that. Schubert. You just keep telling people that because one day they actually might believe you. Uh, because the reality is they did nothing. For four years they did nothing except uh, commission a report, then commission a report into a report. And that's what the Liberal Party did, the Marshall Liberal Government, in terms of the regions. They actually did not lay one brick for the new Barossa Hospital. And a number of the projects which the Marshall Liberal Government did the ribbon cutting, as the member for Lee spoke, said uh, were things which were, were funded and committed by the previous Labor Government. And this government has committed $100 million to the South East, which I'm sure the member from McKillop appreciates uh, in terms of South East. He's not in, in positive, so I, he does appreciate that. So uh, it's also interesting to note that members, members along, I should say opposite, but I can't say that because members alongside me uh, said that, <laughs> said that uh, country cabinets were a waste of time, waste of money. Well, I can tell you country people don't think that. We held both shadow cabinets, we were in, uh, we were in opposition, and also we continue that process now. And, and, and re regional people do appreciate the opportunity to talk to ministers direct, uh, not when they just fly in, fly out, uh, when they do, do, do direct, but also keep, speak to re uh, key, key decision makers in government. They do appreciate that because it's a commitment we've made to make sure that we fully understand the regional people. Now, the Liberal opposition think um, that uh, clearly they didn't see the results in the election results, how, how regional people saw their performance. Because I think that's a pretty, pretty good indicator how regional, what regional people think of predominantly their, their Liberal member parties uh, of that. So it's interesting. But it's not only that. It's even if you look at the read the Morality report to the review into why the Liberal Party failed at last election makes interesting reading how they, these people think, these are Liberal Party members think, how the last the Liberal, how... Uh, now, I know you refer to me just as geriatrics and not, not, not to be taken into account, but they're, not, they're, more, they're your party members. Well, I don't know. I don't, know, I, don't have a li I don't have a Liberal Party membership. Never will. Never will. So, yes. so, but when you look at the results, let's, let's look at the results, what people think not what the Liberal Party echo chamber think. What do the people on the ground think in these regional areas? In Flinders, sadly, there was a swing against the Liberal Party of 23.1%. The reality is there was a swing against the Liberal Party of 23.1%. Okay. In Frome, 10% swing to the Labor Party. In Hammond, 11.7% swing to the Labor Party. In Finnis, and the Finnis one is important. Sorry about this, but the Finnis one is important because it's also the Minister for... Uh, agriculture, fisheries, etc., and regional development, and, what, and, and, and there, was a, there was a swing against against the Liberal Party in Frome as well. There was a swing against the Liberal Party in Frome as well. So I can so in Finnis, the swing the swing was 13.7 percent. Sorry. Oh, did you? It didn't, it didn't. Uh, order. Sorry. So, Mr. Reason, Ms. I'm happy for you to stand up and correct me. I'm happy for you to stand up and correct me. So you, okay, Mr. Speaker. So when you look at 
what other people think, what the voters think, which is most, more important than what we in here think at the end of the day, there was a, there's clearly the people's choice vote was the Liberal Party did a poor, result, poor showing in the regional areas. Sorry, the point of order from the Member Finnis? It's expired. You didn't need to do a point of order for that, Member Finnis. The Member for Chafee. And uh, appreciate